All right, so we just wanted to show you that it's always a good idea to take just a couple of minutes as you're taking your bikes apart and label all of your hardware, just throw them in a sandwich baggie or something and uh, just write on it with a permanent marker. You can save the baggies for next time too. You don't have to throw them away. Anyways, uh, we just label ours, you know, seat, side panels, uh, tank panels, whatever, you know, is appropriate for whatever you're doing. And that way when your bike looks like this and you get ready to go put it back together, it's a little easier. Doing the first thing on the 2,500 mile service, uh, fuel line inspection. So that is this line right here. This is the one that goes to your petcock and your carburetor right there. As you can see it back in there. I'll let go so she can see it. Anyways, that guy. And then this one, I go ahead and check it also. It goes to the fuel tank. This is your vent line and it runs down here to the little black canister. It's kind of hard to see. You can probably see it better from the other side, but if you go to the other side, you can see it. See that black can? It goes right there to the middle. Put my your finger's finger on, on it. it. Can you see my finger? Uh, yep, there it is. All right, so we're gonna clean the fuel strainer screen. Petcock needs to be in the off position, which it probably already is, so you're not leaking fuel. Got a 10 millimeter. Crack it loose. A little bit of trash in there, as you can see. Yep. We'll clean that out in a second. This is your screen right here. And there's an O-ring. The screen goes first, then the O-ring. Let me see if I can get you a little better view there. So what you do is you pull the O-ring out and then the whole screen will slide off of there and you can clean it. Ours is clean, so I'm not gonna bother taking it out, but that's how you do it. Just pull your O-ring, slide your screen out and you can soak it in some gas or carb cleaner or whatever happens to be necessary. All right, so we got this nice and clean. If you look right here on this edge, it's beveled, and that's what seals against your O-ring. So make sure this area is nice and smooth. Make sure your O-ring is in there. Make sure your screen is clean. Start it by hand. Run it down tight by hand. Take your 10 mil. Snug it up. Don't need to get it overly tight, but good and snug. I do not know the torque value for that. You'll have to look that up if there is one. You will. We got just a little bit of rust starting to form on the inside of where our screw goes right here for our tank. Get your WD-40. Hit it. So hook up your excess and that takes care of that. All right, so throttle operation is the next thing on our list. And what I wanna do is turn the handlebars all the way to the right. If you listen, you'll hear the clicks. Hear that? That's at full throttle and that's at idle. Idle, full. You should hear both, full, idle. You want to check your handlebars in all different positions. And make sure you don't have any kinks or binds. This bike's good. Cheers, good? We're about to do the crankcase breather inspection and uh, we just wanted to give props to our friends at 
Great River Honda in Natchez, Mississippi. They uh, donated to us that fancy little unit stand over there, which is making our life much easier. It's a good stand. They, uh, the top rollers are replaceable. They're a, kind of a hard rubber and um, the feet are adjustable. It's got nice rubber pieces on here so it doesn't wiggle around. And the pan is uh, it's padded in the center and obviously it's removable as well. Good place to throw your tools and things like that. And uh, anyways, we really appreciate y'all for supporting us and uh, donating this stand. It's coming in handy today. Thank y'all very much. Just drop this down here for a drip pan in case it dribbles. It's just a plug that pulls out and it's drained out already. Get it clean, stick it back in, pull your clamp back down. Done. All right, so under the seat is your lid for your air box. There's four screws, you can see them right here. Get those out here, 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 and here. Pick it up, move it to the right side of the bike, tilt it up, and it'll come right out like that. Then your air filter is right here. It's held in with four screws also. It just comes right out. So if you need to replace your air filter, that's how you do it. And I do not see part number on it. Yeah, no part number, can't help you with that. Spark plug check. What size socket is that you're using? That is a, let me look as soon as I get it out. It won't drop your spark plug. Five eighths, five eighths deep. There's my spark plug right there. As you can see, it looks really good. It's got one little dark spot right there, but that's all right, that's normal. I will probably buy a larger main jet and do some testing on that because there's a little power left on the table there by looking at that spark plug. And what's the electrode on there? The electrode, if you look at the white part, that's your porcelain and the part sticking up is your electrode. And it arcs between, let me get my tool here, right between where this tool goes. Let me get it turned sideways. That's where your spark is, right between there. So we're, we're checking the gap and I'm right at 35 thousandths and I'll double check, but I believe that's what it was supposed to be on this one. All right, I'm gonna show y'all a little tip for how to set your uh, engine up on TDC for setting the valves. It's just kind of a little trick I figured out earlier today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the bike in gear. Instead of pulling these two plugs and lining up the marks and adjusting it with the, with the, with the, uh, with the bolt here. So I just put it into second gear and I'm, show my hand back here. I'm, I'm just going to pull it through by hand in second. And if you'll watch this up here, if you'll watch it right there, you can see, you'll see the exhaust open and now the intake is open. The intake's the rear one back here. So then once the intake closes, I actually spun it a little too far, so I'm going to do it again. All right, so the, the end exhaust will open right there. Exhaust is open, now the intake's open. And what I'm gonna do 
there we go. I just kind of bump it. And now the intake opened and closed. So now I'm bumping right here. If you look at the timing marks, those two flat hash marks on each side of the bolt, I'm bumping it until they get level with the flat surface right there. And then when you come back here, if you have slack on both valves, you're on TDC on the compression stroke and you're ready to set valves. The front one is our exhaust right here and it should be five thousandths. It is. Got a nice slight drag in there. So my exhaust is good. I'm gonna make sure that the, uh, let's see where my tool go, there we go. Since I'm not adjusting that one, I'll use the socket. Just wanna make sure that everything is tight. Nothing's getting loose. Nope, good and tight, didn't move. So my exhaust check is done, no adjustment necessary. I can hear one of them tapping just a little bit and I suspect it's this one, my intake. Three thousandths is the clearance on that. And I've got a five right here. I'm just gonna see if it'll fit, see how loose it is. Yep, even a five fits in there. It's probably around a six, really. So that one is either worn or loosened up a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to my three thousandths, which is what I want for the intake side. And I'm gonna grab my tool, 10 millimeter. I'm gonna loosen my jam nut. All you need to do is back it up a little bit. Got my 3000 feeler gauge here. Let me show that again. 0 0.003 or 0 0.08 millimeter. I'll slide it right between the valve and the tappet itself. Let's see if I can do this with my fingers. A lot of times these little things are just kind of hard to get to. See how that feels. That was a little tight, a little too much. That feels about right. I'm gonna snug it just a tad. Yep, that feels good. So I leave it in there. I run the jam nut down. And as I tighten it up, I keep an eye on this square head and make sure it doesn't move. Once I get it pretty close, I switch over to my boxing wrench when I start to torque it up. That one won't fit, so I'm actually gonna use my ratchet. Hopefully it won't move. That's good and tight. Doesn't appear that it moved much, if any. And my three thousandths, if you can see right in here, I can pull it out nice and easy. And I'll slide it back in there. That feels really good. No slack up and down with it in there. We're set, we're done, that's all there is to it. All right, just wanted to remind y'all, if you look right in here, there's an O-ring right there. That's on your secondary airline. There's another one right here on this dowel for your valve cover. And there's another one right here on your valve cover. That's another dowel right there. 
So be sure these two O-rings are on before you put this on. And then before you attach that to the top of this, be sure that one's got it on there. Okay, so next on the list was the uh, chain and the chain slider. Uh, we've already done the chain on this one and it's all good shape. And if you need any more details on how to do that, you can uh, research our other video that's in the uh, 600 mile service. But your chain slider is here. That one wasn't in there. So this black piece of rubber right here, plastic, is runs along here and it wraps around right there. You can see it through that hole. But it's this black piece right here that my finger's on, right there. So you're just checking it for condition, making sure that it's not broken or torn all the way down. Main thing is right here, you can see the chain slides on this top track and eventually it'll wear down a little bit, usually right up here in that area right there, right along in the front at the top, about right above this bolt. So this is your front brake lever right here. This is your front brake. Right there is your sight glass for your brake fluid. If you see right there, it's a little hard to read, but that says, uh, says lower. So that's your lower level right there. So as long as your bubble, the bottom of your bubble there, or the top of the fluid is above that lower level, you're fine. And on the rear brake, there is none because it's drum. So right here, it tells you that you can use dot three or dot four you need to add any brake fluid to it. All right, so to check your brake pack wear indicator, pull this little back piece out and it'll slide up and out of the way. I turn it sideways to hold itself up. If you look right here on that tab, it's an arrow. And then there's a little chevron just above my finger. You might zoom in on that so they can see it and then hold it there. So the chevron's a little hard to see. But when you push the brake pedal all the way down, that little indicator tab should not go past the chevron. If you can't see the chevron, it's just in front of my finger right there, that little bitty triangle mark. So you just go down with your brake pad and if it doesn't go past that, you're good shape. Okay, so on the front brake pads, I am just below the caliper and you can see the disc right there in the middle. The black right there that's touching the disc is your brake pad material. The next little more gray looking piece of steel is your backing plate. So what you're looking for is just to make sure you still have plenty of pad left and you're not getting close to your backing plates. This particular bike has plenty of brakes left. Yeah, you're on it. Okay. Okay, so it's hard to video, but I'm looking at the front brake pads and the little D-shaped window there that we're kind of looking through. You can see that line where the flashlight is. And as I roll around, you can see it right there, kind of going along the edge of the rotor. So that's your wear indicators for your brake pads. When you can't see any of that hash anymore, that's when you need to replace your brake pads. Give you an idea of kind of how I was looking at it. And there's your caliper all right so basically we're just doing the uh the brake system check it's part of your pre-ride inspection you should be doing before every ride anyways here's your front brake lever mine's abbreviated because uh, you know stuff happens got good pressure the rear one right down here same thing got good pedal if you need to take up some slack this is your slack adjuster right here Basically, if, it's, if you're having to move your foot down too far, you'll screw this in. When you get done with your adjustment, 
you should have about that much free play or a little bit more maybe. You just wanna make sure that you're not dragging. Spin your tire in both directions. Make sure that it's not dragging on your brake. That's really all there is to it. So you wanna make sure that your brake light is illuminating. I stick my hand back here just because it reflects off my hand and I can see it easy. Front brake's working. Rear one's the same. It's working good. If you need to adjust your rear brake, as far as how it, when it comes on sooner or later. Brake light. Yeah, the brake light, thank you. You'll loosen this jam nut up right here and you can adjust it up and down. It's a kind of a threaded deal. You just spin it and it'll, it'll bring it in or out. And that changes the spring tension and when the light comes on. This is what actually triggers your tail light for the rear brake. The front one is pretty fixed. You don't have a lot of adjustment on it. So the next item on our 2500 mil inspection is the headlight aim. However, in the owner's manual, there's nothing about how to adjust it. We cannot find any indication that it is an adjustable headlight. We are waiting on a service manual to get here. Um, so if that information is incorrect, we will correct it with you guys later. Okay, so the clutch free play movement is 3 eighths of an inch to 13 sixteenths. You'll measure the free play movement here outside at the ball. And basically, that's just the free play until it starts getting a little bit of tension. I just use one finger and as soon as it stops, that's where you measure it. Next on the list was uh, suspension. So what I do on that is I'll go through and I'll check my bolts here and here, make sure everything's nice and tight. Make sure that I'm not don't have any fork seal leaks around here. Just in general, you know, you're looking for cracks or anything like that, making sure that everything is secure and your fork gators are in good shape. That helps protect your fork seals. Keeps the dirt off of them. Same thing, checking everything in here, just making sure everything's good and secure. Couple bolts there, another one right here. I always make sure that my handlebars don't have any kinks or binds. They spin freely like that. So as long as they spin nice and free, you know, just kind of one finger operation, everything's good. On the back, Check your nut, make sure that it's not loosened up. Just generally looking for cracks. Right in this area. Let's see if I can get the camera in there where we can see what's going on. Right around in here, all in this area, you wanna check that area, especially if you're hard on it and you're jumping it a lot. Check that area real good for cracks or anything. You can see right in here is the top mount. You just want to make sure. There it is right there. That's your bolt right there. Check it, make sure it's nice and tight. Make sure you don't have any leaks or fluid or anything leaking out of your rear shock back here. Your pivot bolt for your swing arm. It attaches right here. On the other side, it's gonna be your nut. Definitely gonna wanna check that. Check it for security. And that's about it for suspension. Really? All right, so wheels and tires is next on the list. Basically on your tires, obviously you're checking for tread but you're also checking for nicks and cuts. There's one little bitty nick, but it's right in the middle of a tread block, so that's not an issue. Also looking for dry rot cracks in the sidewall or between lugs. 
making sure your tread's staying on and you don't have any cuts or anything like that. Check tire pressures. On your spokes, you wanna check them all for tightness. You can go through, squeeze them all. I start at the stem and I'll go all the way around. Once I get done with this side, I'll go to the opposite side and check the opposite side in the same way, same manner. Just make sure they're all straight and tight. I give it kind of a quick spin and make sure my rim is nice and true. Same thing with the front. Again, I always start with the stem. front ones will move a little bit more than the back ones will because they're a little bit longer in length. Uh, same thing, give it a little spin, make sure everything looks nice and true. You can just kind of hold your finger up there and check it out. One of these days when we get ready to replace tires, I'll uh, show y'all how to true a rim and change tires on these things. Tires are doing pretty good. They still got a decent amount of life left in them. If you were riding hardcore off-road every day, they'd be getting pretty worn, but they're still doing pretty good. I think I'll get around 5,000 miles or so out of these, maybe six, somewhere in that ballpark. Tires look good. All right, so we're gonna clean our spark arrestor. It's in here, five millimeter Allen. Ah, there it goes. There's three bolts. Hold this on, I believe. Yep. Things are pretty snug too. All right, three bolts there. helping us with our maintenance today. <laughs> All right, eight millimeter. Those are tight too. These little Motion Pro tools are really nice. I don't know if y'all have seen those or not, but I carry this with me in a bunch of different sockets. And whenever you're on the road, if, uh, if you've got to do a little maintenance, it really speeds things up on the side of the road. Okay, so here's your spark arrestor. What you want to do is check it this is the double screen, so you can't see through that part. You can see a few little particles on the right there. But basically, you're just making sure that that's 
clean and not obstructed. This one's actually in good shape and really doesn't even need cleaning, but I'll probably go ahead and give it a quick little scrub. So that's what it should look like, nice and clean. You should be able to see through it. So anywhere you got rust on your bike, exhaust systems are obviously the worst about it on pretty much anything at all. I'll hit them with a little WD-40. Give it a little wipe down and it'll just kind of help protect everything. Pull that out and, and a little WD-40 inside there. Make it last a little longer. Put it back in there. Come back in with your spark arrestor. And what I like to do, start all your hardware before you tighten anything down helps you align everything and get all your screws and bolts started just snug them down and then i'll come back and tighten them up And there's three and it's just a matter of putting the cover back on should be like that looks right to me and it's just a matter of putting these three back in there and tightening them up that's all there is to it Tire information is right here. I run 22 in my front tire, 29 in my rear, because I'm usually around maximum weight with my bags and everything. It also has drive chain tension, tells you where to check it for your free play. Basically, you're looking for one inch of free play right in this area right here. All right, so we're gonna do the side stand check. We're gonna put it down. Basically, we're just making sure it locks in place good. It does. I'm gonna pull the clutch in. When I kick it down into gear, the bike should die with the side stand down. And it does. 